when Ryan Terrio scored what turned out to be the game-winning run in the last game of the 2012 World Series for the San Francisco Giants, I know I was the first one to get on Twitter right away and before the game was over and said, if the Giants hold on and win this game, which they eventually did, he will become the first person in history to win and score the, the game-winning run in the College World Series and in the World Series. And I was right, wasn't I? You were exactly right. That was yep. cool, huh? Unbelievable. All right, now, let me show people first. This is, and we're, we'll, get a, we'll get a picture of this for you later. This is Ryan's championship ring from the St. Louis Cardinals from 2011. And thank you for letting me hold that. I feel kind of scared. You know, it's, like, <laughs> it's okay. It. And it's a replica anyway, so don't worry about it. If you want to win the World Series, you get Ryan Terry on your roster. Because there's only one person who won the World Series in 2011 and 2012, and that's Ryan Terry. That's an amazing thing, isn't it? So fortunate to be on, on two wonderful teams. You know, um, it's such a, a journey, first off, from spring training to the end of the, the regular season. And then, uh, you know, the postseason kicks off, and it's, it's a whole other season. People don't realize how, how uh, you know, stressful and hard that is. Just that month seems like it's a whole other season. And then uh, it would be terrible to go that whole time and, and, and get to the last game and lose. So fortunately, yeah, I've been, I've been very lucky being able to win two. And the Giants, of all things, so interesting. You know, last year we had Mike Fontenot on from mm -hmm. when the Giants won when he was with them previously. Mm -hmm. And if you had said way back when, when the Skip Burtman dynasty started in the mid-1980s, okay, you'll go all this time, and the first guy to win a World Series ring as one of your players it turned out to be Mike Fontenot, mm -hmm. right? And then for Ryan to come back with two more uh -huh. late in your career. So the coolest thing of all is... One, it was an amazing World Series with the Tigers. Right. All right. What's it like to face Justin Verlander? He's, uh, he's got the best stuff out there. You know, there's no doubt about that. He's a bulldog on the mound, doesn't give in. Um, great mound presence. You know, that's one thing that uh, I think sets, sets apart the, the really, really good pitchers to the guys that just have really good stuff, you know, their mound presence. Um, nothing really bothers them too much. There was a point in that game – uh, I believe the first yeah, it was game one, I think, where, where he, we were hitting him around pretty good. And, um, and the pitching coach comes out to, to talk to him, and he looks at the pitching coach, and you could read his lips, and he goes, seriously? You know, like, I don't need you to come out here right now. Like, he had it. You <laughs> yeah, know, he yeah, had it yeah. under control. So the pitching coach comes out and talks to him, and he's just kind of looking the other way or whatever. And, and uh, we, we had him figured out, man. He's a, uh, he's a wonderful pitcher. You know, in the postseason, you really have a lot of time to game plan for these guys. You know, so it makes it different. You know, you look at football and, and they talk about game plan in the Super Bowl and the playoffs. Um, you know, if you don't go in with the right game plan, uh, you, you're in trouble. And especially with the news now going on with the whole game plan talk with the Raiders and all that. But uh, um, we, we, we had a good plan and uh, we executed and hit him around. I don't, how, how as an athlete can you even see and time and hit a 100 plus mile an hour fastball? You don't have much time to react. Uh, with a guy like that, you know, he's, he's different because he has – three legitimate strikeout pitches, maybe four. And um, you really just kind of got to pick one or two and, and go with that if, uh, you know, and if you guess wrong, you obviously you're going to strike out, and that's what you're supposed to do. But, um, you know, you try to get as, 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 uh, as many tendencies as you can on him, certain counts, what he likes to throw. Uh, one thing that I like to do is, is study the catchers more than the pitchers, really. Uh, you know, the catchers will pattern what they, what they call. Mm -hmm. And uh, if something's working, you know, they'll stick with that pattern. So... Um, you get a good idea of what might be coming that pitch, you know, an educated guess, and and uh, and go with it. And you got throws a 92 mile an hour slider, uh, you're obviously not going to hit that, you know. So uh, I mean, that's a plus fastball. And so if he throws that, you just tip your cap and go back and get you some Gatorade. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let me do a little scene setter. Ryan Terrio is from Baton Rouge. He went to Broadmoor High School. Correct. Where he was a fine, fine baseball player who went to LSU, where he became an even finer baseball player, scored the game-winning run in the 2000 World Series off of uh, Brad Cressy's base hit. Right. And one thing Ryan Terrio can do and still could do and still can do is run. He was fast as hell. And you scored that run. You were so far ahead of the throw. <laughs> slid, bounced up, went all nuts. Right. Okay. And then his... his Baseball career was not blueprint by any stretch. No. And, you know, I've been fortunate enough to interview him and write stories about him over the years. For the longest time, you're in the minor league system for the Cubs who drafted you, and they screwed around with what position you should play. And, right. of course, you're a prototypical shortstop or second baseman. Mm -hmm. Finally got up to the Cubs, 
and was with his good friend Mike Fontenot, who's also from Louisiana. I think Mike, Mike went to Salmon or Slidell, one of those, Salmon, right? yeah. Yeah, yeah, and of course they played at LSU together. So they were the Cajun Cubs. Mm -hmm. And then a couple of years ago, that duo got broken up, and, and Ryan ended up, the, the long story is, or the short story is, you ended up with the Cardinals. Correct. Uh, with a stop in L.A., right? Before then? Was it before then? After then? I get uh, Yes. Traded L.A. Traded L.A. Right. Um, and that winner traded to St. Louis. Right. So fast forward to the end of that season, uh, the 2011 season, the Cardinals win the World Series. And uh, without a doubt, the most dramatic, incredible, mm. emotional World Series ever with the Rangers twice one pitch away from clinching. Right. 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 Game six was, you know, the best game I've ever played in. You, you hear it say many times, the best World Series game ever. And, um, you know, I'm sure that point could be argued. Uh, Not for excitement. Uh, I mean, I'm telling you, that was uh, what, just an unbelievable run. Our offense, first off, the, in that year in St. Louis, was second to none. You know, so going into the playoffs, I really thought that we would just steamroll everybody. Um, we met up with Texas, and their offense was just as good, you know. And so uh, it made for a wonderful series. Um, some stars were born that series, no doubt about it. David Freeze, you know, a guy that's talked about quite a bit now. Um, you know, and you saw Yadier Molina, unbelievable catcher. Everybody knew that, but but you really saw him kind of uh, come of age as a player, and um, just a great series. So they win the World Series. Now, the Cardinals made the cardinal error <laughs> of letting Ryan go because if you don't have Ryan Terrio, you don't win the World Series in right. today's baseball world. So he ends up with the Giants. However, he wasn't there in St. Louis to get his World Series ring. Mm -hmm. This is a great story about Tony Lewis, the former manager of the Cardinals, who right. retired because he knew he wasn't going to have Ryan Terrio anymore. Right, me, me or Albert, but that, yeah. that's just an afterthought. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Tony, um, from a character standpoint, is it's just an unbelievable person, unbelievable man. Um, I learned a lot from him, not only baseball-wise, but uh, you know, just how to treat people. It's no, uh, it's no surprise that, that he's going to be a Hall of Fame manager and, and just a wonderful person. Okay, preface. Yeah. Uh, flew to New York to give me my ring. Uh, we were playing the Mets. I ended up with food poisoning slash virus from the kids and was not on that trip. So he made that trip for no reason. And uh, he calls me and he says, you know, quit being a weenie. You need to get your butt out here and yada, yada, yada. Uh, he said, I'm out here to deliver your ring. I said, well, I'm sorry, Skip, I'm not here. I appreciate you coming, but, uh, you know, just give it to Boach, Bruce Bochy, and, uh, and I'll get it when we get back to, to San Francisco. He says, well, I'm not going to do that. I said, okay. Well, I'll get it, I guess, whenever I see you. And uh, we got back home, and I show up in the clubhouse one day, and there he is. And he's sitting there waiting. In, in San Francisco. In San Francisco, in the clubhouse, sitting there waiting with the ring, and um, big, beautiful box. Uh, Come to find out, not only did he do that for me, but he did it for all the players that were no longer on the Cardinals. Um, you know, he flew to Detroit with Gerald Laird and, and uh, gave him his ring. I mean, just a wonderful man. Um, that was great. That's a cool story. Yep. All right, he's Ryan Terrio, currently a free agent, and maybe he'll have some insight for us about where he might end up. When we get back to Sports 225, right after he got that ring, I saw Ryan, and we'll tell you that story in just a bit. I'm Lee Feinswag. We'll be right back.